Hey, what's up guys? So I'm doing something a little different today. I get this question all the time. Dave, how do you make your videos? How do you make it so that you're standing out from uh, how you move the background, all of that stuff? Uh, so today I'm gonna show you exactly my setup. It's gonna be kind of gorilla style. I'm shooting this on my iPhone, so let's get to it. All right, so here is the studio. This is where it all happens. Uh, let me take you through the rig first and I'll kind of get into the nitty gritty of the production. Uh, workflow. So here's my computer. I built this. Uh, this is a Hackintosh. It's dedicated to this video production. I don't use it for anything else. Um, th that's kind of the reason I built a Hackintosh is that uh, it was, you know, kind of tailor fit to my exact use case. This is before, uh, you know, Mac Pros were, were even a thing uh, or the trash cans, I guess, existed. Uh, so this is a Focusrite 2i2 interface on top. It's the previous generation, not, not the, the current one, but it's very, very similar. Uh, I'm really only using one channel here. Uh, I do have headphones for playback connected, but no speakers. Uh, then over here, we've got a cloud lifter. That just gives the microphone that I use uh, a little bit of a, a boost in signal because it's kind of a, a low output microphone. It's a very good microphone, it just doesn't have a lot of gain to it. So that means I don't have to push the focus right preamps quite so hard. They're not the cleanest uh, preamps when it comes to high gain stuff. So it helps to have a little bit of a boost in front. Uh, let me just show you the microphone that I'm using here and then we'll kind of get to the camera and the lighting and stuff. So here is my mic. This is a Shure SM7B. I've owned this mic for, oh gosh, probably about 15 years at this point. Uh, it works really well for, for any sort of broadcast. You know, as you see like Joe Rogan and those type of guys, uh, lots of broadcast podcasters are using these mics. They've been industry standard for uh, many, many decades. Now, if you pay real close attention to the channel, you might have noticed that over the last few months, the sound actually has changed a little bit in terms of the quality of the sound. It actually got worse for a little while, and that's because I moved away from that Shure SM7B mic, and I moved to a shotgun microphone. So the reason there was to obviously take the microphone out of the shot, make things look a little bit more professional, but uh, it didn't work so well. As you might be able to tell, I'm in an unfinished basement right now. So I've literally just kind of thrown up. Uh, we got some sound blankets on the walls over here. Uh, we got a green screen behind me. There is kind of a facade from uh, my days as a recording studio uh, engineer. So I have some acoustic treatments around. I put that up because I thought it looked really good on video. Uh, but the shotgun mic in this environment just ended up picking up too much uh, extraneous noise. So I've got you know small kids running around upstairs. It's one of the reasons I don't do uh, lives because I you know kids walk in when I'm recording basically all the time. Uh, so that's kind of the sound setup. Now let's talk about video. So here is my camera. This is a Sony A6400 mirrorless camera, and I am using uh, this Sigma 30 millimeter lens. Uh, and that just stays attached basically all the time. This camera just kind of stays right here. And if you're wondering what this big hood is, that is where I can put an iPad. There's not currently one in there, but I can put an iPad in there and then it's a teleprompter. So if I do have a scripted sales video I have to record for a client, uh, I can do that right there. In fact, I even script uh, some of the videos for the YouTube channel. I got a little light down here. This is just like a little Home Depot light shines in my face. Uh, and then in terms of lighting, that's probably the biggest key to success in terms of making stuff look good. Uh, I've got lots of lights down here. I'm in a basement where I'm fortunate to have, uh, you know, kind of a lot of space. So to give you some perspective, here is where I sit. I'm right next to the microphone and there's probably a good kind of eight feet before we get to the green screen. Um, and then the green screen is lit separately. I've got one more of these little work lights from Home Depot uh, shooting uh, this side of the green screen and then this, this big kind of uh, fluorescent panel light I got on Amazon probably 15 years ago. Uh, and you know, you could probably get LED ones for much less money at this point, but I've had these lights forever. Uh, I've got two of these, so same setup on the other side. Uh, the other lower uh, light is just kind of taking care of the bottom corners to get a nice even light on the green screen. Now I'm using an app to make sure that the green screen is lit decently. I can see it's a little bit hot over on, on this side right here. It looks a little bit hot in this angle, but uh, to get a nice even uh, lighting of the green screen is really important to let the software uh, you know, key you out really nicely and still show some detail. So I will uh, show you that software that's called Green Screener. And uh, I think it's just like a three or $4 app and it makes lighting the green screen really easy. 
So basically the way I record my, my screen, they get asked this all the time, is on a Mac you can just press Shift Command 5 and then it brings up this little selector here to let you record your screen. So what I actually do is I have this little Apple script right here uh, that I have written to actually resize my browser window. Let me go ahead and open up a browser. Uh, and if I were to move this around or stretch it anywhere, uh, I just open up this script that resizes the browser and snaps it right to the perfect spot. And then when I go to do a screen recording, I already have the coordinates all set up. It makes it very simple to just get in and out recording uh, the screen without having to, to monkey around and get anything extra in the background that I don't necessarily want to show. So that's how I do the screen recording itself. But in terms of capturing my video, I'm actually using a Blackmagic capture card into the Hackintosh. Now, I did not always use this equipment. So I started off with just a regular old uh, you know, Logitech webcam. And when I upgraded to a a physical, you know, standard standalone camera. I originally used a uh, CamLink from Elgato. Now, the problem with the CamLink I found is that the the latency was just really, really long, and it was a little bit unreliable because it ran over USB. Because I have a Hackintosh, I actually have slots in my computer where I can put in PCI cards. So I got one of the Blackmagic cards, and that's just connected directly to my camera. And then I use this app over here. I think it's like. Uh, 20 or 30 bucks. It's called Swift Capture. No relation. It just happens to be called Swift Capture. My camera is not on right now, so you won't see me, but I could go ahead and turn it on. One second. All right, there I am. So there is a slight delay with the audio when I'm recording from the video. So we do sync that up in post production later. And so basically, I'm recording both the video camera as well as the screen at the same time. Now that gives me two separate files or two separate tracks. What I do then is I open up a new library for every single video inside of Final Cut Pro. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'll just create a new library right here and I'll just call it test right now. And there we go. Now I usually import my files. Let me just grab something quick. Then I'd make a new project. And then the first thing I'll usually do is just drag and drop the actual video footage. So I'm kind of on top here. And then I will drag and drop the uh, screen recording right here. So here is the actual footage of me getting set up. I do a little you know, clap at the beginning to synchronize the sound. Uh, and then down below here is the screen recording. So what we do is just kind of resize myself and, and remove the green background. Final Cut makes it really easy. We can just drag over the keyer and it does a a really good job if you have a nicely lit green background uh, as I try to spend the extra time beforehand making sure that all that stuff looks good. Uh, so there we can see the screen. Now the only thing that's left is of course I'm too big, right? No one wants to have me taking over the entire screen. So I just scale myself down. Uh, I can see that the, the key is not perfect. Uh, those corners are a little bit hot, so I would have to go in and tweak that. But for now, you get the point. And then I just kind of drag myself over here. And there, that's kind of the, the visual that you're used to seeing in the uh, overall production. Now, here's the other thing is that I don't actually edit these videos anymore. I definitely started off editing them myself, but I have a full-time job and a family and doing videos every single day is already kind of taking up a lot of my time if I had to spend several hours editing them. And honestly, that's how long it takes because I don't always script out things as well as I should. And I spend a lot of time doing multiple takes to make sure that I can communicate things clearly and effectively. So it's actually a fairly decent job. So what I've done is outsource this to someone in the Philippines. And here is how I found them. This is a virtual job board for people that work in the Philippines. I've actually used this website for years and years to find virtual assistants for all sorts of different virtual assistant like tasks. Uh, but then it dawned on me, hey, I might be able to find a video editor here that can help uh, allow me to produce more YouTube content. And sure enough, I was able to. I was actually able to find someone who works in Final Cut Pro. Our workflow is actually really simple. What we do is have a shared video folder on Dropbox, and I just work right out of that folder in Final Cut. Now, the original footage is huge. When it's coming off of my camera, it's gigabytes and gigabytes. So that's why I actually create the proxy media which is much smaller. It's going to be 1080p quality, whereas my camera records in 4K. So the proxy media is getting synced over Dropbox. And then when I'm done working in the library, I just let 
my editor know, he's able to open up the library in his Dropbox without any real issues. Now, this isn't a officially supported uh, collaborative way to work inside of Final Cut, but I'll tell you that it's been working flawlessly for us for uh, about seven months now without any hiccups. We haven't lost any data or had any uh, libraries go bad. So I can definitely confirm that it works if you're careful and you just never open up the library at the same time. Obviously, if you do that, uh, the files will get out of sync and I would expect that it would, it would crash completely. So when I create a new project, I just do it in this new folder here. And uh, this is the project I just made earlier in this video. And then here is what I was working on last night. I'm gonna upload that shortly to YouTube. Uh, he'll be able to log in, do the edits. Uh, they automatically sync back to the library. So then I can double check them and make any little tweaks that I want. I know how to use Final Cut. I'm an okay editor. This just saves me a lot of time to edit out all the flubs, add in the titles, just make everything look as good as it can. So if you wanna find a virtual assistant, I highly recommend checking out online jobs. I'll add a link down below. Of course, that'll be the referral link for this channel. Uh, it is not free, so you have to pay a little bit of money. I have this premium plan right over here and I just let it run. We have several workers that we've hired from online jobs, so we just let this $99 a month service uh, continue because they provide a worker mentoring service. They kind of check in with people and see if they're having any questions or if they have any issues communicating with you know their, their overseas uh, employer. It, it kind of just makes the uh, cultural difference a little bit easier to handle. You certainly don't need to keep this thing going. You can definitely cancel after you hire someone. Uh, we've just found it valuable enough that we've kept it on. All right, that is gonna do it. That's the studio tour. I hope it was helpful. Definitely let me know if you have any questions. I'd be glad to, uh, you know what? I'll probably just link to all of the specific gear that I've talked about in this video. I'll link off to that green screener app and uh, I'll also link to online jobs so you can check that out. I definitely recommend it. Uh, if you have any VA services, whether it's video editing or otherwise, uh, you can find some really talented people through that service. Uh, all right, I think that's gonna do it. I hope everyone's staying safe in quarantine time and I'll see you in the next review.